So in our previous uh, video, we talked a little bit about word choice being critical when describing material properties. So stiffness correlates to describing the Young's modulus. Higher the Young's modulus, stiffer the material, lower the Young's modulus, more compliant. Strength, there's a couple of properties that we could be talking about. We could be talking about yield strength, ultimate tensile strength, and fracture stress or strength. This is dangerous because when you're designing a system or you're designing an application or you're trying to figure out or utilize a material, if you're talking about any of these three different things, it could be vastly different properties um, and could have horrible implications for your material selection. So we have to really be careful and think about that uh, quite a bit. Um, how ductile is your material? Um, is a material ductile? What are we talking about? We're talking, we're talking about the strain at failure. Um, so more strain, you know, higher strain at failure value, more ductile, lower strain at failure, lower strain at failure value, more brittle. Uh, material resilience, that refers to toughness. Um, again, not a stiff compliant. If it's weak, that material is not tough. Brittle, and there we go. Um, so let's look at some stress strain curves, and let's try to kind of separate and start to classify materials and categories of metals, ceramics, and polymers, and let's try to get some kind of typical values or behaviors that we should expect. Um, so stress strain curves, um, ceramics, glasses, tungsten, oxides, they are very, very stiff, as we previously saw, but they are brittle. Um, typical strain at failure values will be 0 0.001. Um, you can see here that they exhibit almost little to no plastic deformation. Um, so they are basically elastic until failure uh, and fracture, and they can fail at very, very small, small strain values. Metals, less, not stuff, stiff, um, but they can be more ductile. Uh, they typically will be more ductile, strain at failure, strain at Strain at failure values typically be 0.1, 10%, 12% strain. You'll see that commonly for aluminum. Um, can be more ductile. Again, fail at larger strains. They could exhibit necking, as you can see here. So again, ultimate tensile strength, necking, and then fracture. Um, they can do some strain hardening as well, but um, but yes. Um, again, ductility, stiffness, strength depend on bonding um, and your potential interaction. Polymers, biomaterials, more compliant. Um, and they are extremely ductile. So they are not as stiff. They're probably the least stiff of these materials. Composites can probably be somewhere in between here. Um, but the unique thing about polymers is that strain at failure value, 5 to 10. So look at that. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, probably 4 orders of magnitudes larger than um, than that value. So that, that explains why Kevlar is so tough. You're getting a 4 order of magnitude increase in that strain at failure value. Um, and again... Uh, one of the other things you can see with polymers is uh, at the very end, right before fracture, you can have these polymer chains realign and recrystallize and the stabilizing of a neck, and you can see potentially some slight increase at the very end there if you're looking at um, true stress strain curves. But um, that's a unique thing about polymers. They're dynamic. You're breaking those intermolecular bonds as well. Um, once you start to plastically deform, the material can either strain harden it can strain soften, or it can be per behave per perfectly plastic, um, uh, and so we'll get into that a little bit um, a little bit later. Uh, and next time we're going to talk about how do we generate true stress strain curves. So we've been describing previously engineering stress and strain. Um, that's the most common that you'll deal with, but we will also want to discuss um, true stress and strain as well. So we'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.